Jerry is an asshole, and this movie gave me chest pain. All right, so this is, uh, we're finally getting up to all the movies we've had to catch up on. This is the last big one, I think, outside of SpongeBob. And thank God. Yeah. <laughs> if I were tired, I swear it's not because of the insomnia. It's because this movie took freaking forever to get through. <laughs> Good Lord. Well, hopefully you'll sleep better tonight after this movie has so lovingly lulled you to sleep. It's just I hope. a movie about people in a hotel and Tom and Jerry just happen to be there sometimes. <laughs> yeah. That's the best way to describe it. Like, it didn't even really... It felt like Tom and Jerry was an afterthought is the best way to describe it. I wouldn't be surprised if it was, honestly. <laughs> because a lot of this movie feels like random pitches just kind of got smushed together to make something relatively coherent. If I'll give it, like any kind of credit is that at least it was consistent with the rules of its animals in this universe. Yep. They were all animated. So I was like, okay, I'll give it that credit. They gave, put that much thought into it, but that's pretty much where it stops. Yeah. (laughs) And I will say sometimes the animation was okay. The Um, animation's like fine as like a pseudo 2d, 3d kind of thing. Yeah. There are other times where like, it's, it's not so fine. Like, I mean, with the, um, it's hard to describe it. Like, there's sometimes where, like, it, they actually make it look like fluid 2D sometimes. Um, but sometimes. then others, just the 3D models, um, some about the animation either felt off, or then there are other times where just it looks really ugly, like with the CG tiger that yeah. they had at one point. It's just like, oh, no. No, 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 no. Yeah, like, this felt like... Uh... I'm willing to bet the original pitch for this is they want to do like a super realistic kind of animation like they've done with like Alvin and the Chipmunks or Peter Rabbit or any one of those god-awful movies. Um, And then I guess Mm. either they didn't have the budget or everyone else just said no. So to save money, they wanted the more cartoonish effect. Like, Yeah, I think so. I I don't know, man. Like, this is a weird... This is kind of a weird movie. Um, I don't even... I've almost forgotten everything I've watched already. I it did, was. Did you grow up oh. with Tom and Jerry when you were a kid? Yes, I love Tom and Jerry. I always watched the shit out of that when I was a kid. Yeah, me too. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm like trying to piece together just like what happened. It's so, granted with a pitch like this, it's not exactly like you're expecting excellence. This isn't going to be Who Framed Roger Rabbit. That's also, the, the whole fact that. Tim Story, a.k.a. guy behind the frickin' Fantastic Four movies. Not fan stick the other Fantastic yeah. Four movies. Which were also bad in their own right. For their At the own very reasons. first Fantastic Four movie that we never went to theaters, the other, other Fantastic Four movies. Yeah. <laughs> the ones where at least we had Chris Evans as the Human Torch? The only one that got a sequel. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and the Ramon, uh, eh, writer director behind Ghost Rider, yeah, which is a movie I love, but for all the wrong reasons. Um, I had fun with the first one. I'm not gonna lie; like, it's not a good movie, but oh, it's I like I, 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 I enjoyed first of it. Oh, it's hilariously dumb. I, I love the first Ghost Rider. I laugh my ass off. The sequel's even better. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, this fucking with this freaking Looney Tunes face. Yeah. <laughs> when, when he, Oh, oh wait, that's what he would have He's scratching at the door! Or whatever the hell he does in that movie. Oh, yeah. uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm talking movies I'd rather be talking about right now. Yeah, uh, it just, the basic plot is it, it's typical person like lying their way through stuff to get what they want. Chloe Grace Moretz is a person who's kind of getting shafted on temp jobs and basically steals someone's resume after telling them to, that you're not good enough because I'm part of this hotel and you're not right. Um, <laughs> because that's the, that's the Cliff Notes version of it. My vocab, not good now. Um, meanwhile, uh, I guess we get Tom and Jerry's origin story, which is Tom comes to the Big Apple with dreams of stardom as a piano player, and Jerry's just a shameless con artist moocher 
and he's <laughs> playing to be the protagonist, and somehow Tom is the bad guy when Jerry yeah. actively tries to steal his shtick like an asshole. Yeah. Like, it's like, okay, oh, it's, like, it's, like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I get it. He is kind of scamming them with the whole blind cat thing, playing a piano. But on the other hand, it's a goddamn cat playing a goddamn piano. Yeah, it's like, it's fucking New York, dude. Get your own street corner. <laughs> you fucking moocher. No, it doesn't have an original idea in his head. Just borrow shit from everybody else. Like yeah. a communist. This movie is secretly Russian propaganda and those damn millennial socialists. Damn <laughs> uh, it, this whole movie is socialist propaganda. Like, the, that, what's her name? Chloe, what's her, what's her face? Chloe Grace Moretz. Chloe Grace Moretz comes in there with no experiences and steals the resume of the superior worker, the woman who has earned her way to the top. And because of her ambition, her goddamn ambition and will to be treated like an equal employee under the law, she manages to succeed. What socialist propaganda bullshit. I don't know. I'm trying to think of anything to talk about in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm yeah just presenting this. Mary. All I gotta, yeah, all I remember is that her name is Kayla. She lies to get what she needs to get. She's not a terrible person, but she is kind of conning things. Yeah, was, you know, it's New York. Kind of you gotta survive good, somehow. Apparently, I guess she's good at the job. So sure, whatever. Um, yeah. And so, at the lot, big chunks of movies is her trying to figure out how to do this hotel job, and then Tom and Jerry occasionally show up and do some hijinks, and then eventually they integrate into the plot, uh, kind of. Yeah. Even even that is kind of like tangentially when the when they need something for Tom and Jerry to do, they'll occasionally have like, okay, Tom is here now. He's gonna like hunt for the mouse now. He's gonna do sticky things. Okay. Meanwhile, back to wedding business. I'm gonna talk to the wedding about their marriage troubles, based on their soon to be marriage troubles and years of counseling. Um, but they're rich, so it's okay. Uh. uh so I guess because the whole plot of this is uh, they they're hiring uh, this hotel manager like this hotel manager kind of to uh, basically help set up an Indian wedding for like the the best the the most well renowned Hollywood like New York couple that are famous for reasons I don't know um, I, I forgot their names I just remember Ben because Ben Jost plays him or something like that the guy the uh, Weekend Update guy from Saturday Night Live. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I just know that the uh, wife was in the movie Lion. That's or the the fiance was in the movie Lion, the one with uh, Deb Patel, I believe. I never saw that one. I heard it was good. I think uh, I know it got some Oscar nominations in there, something. But yeah, um, he's. He's a doofus dumbass who just keeps making things bigger and bigger. And she wants a small Indian wedding, which, Grant, you've had an Indian wedding. Is that a thing yeah. that can happen? I don't think so. No. Okay. As you were a witness to said wedding. I was. <laughs> and I know that was on a lower budget. <laughs> yeah. Lower budget. <laughs> and there was still a horse. And the whitest man in a turban I've ever seen. <laughs> Which I will admit, that was the one part made me chuckle is when the Indian dad looks at the like the blue eyed blonde hair white boy and goes, "You are not wearing a turban." <laughs> yeah, it's like, is that a question or is that a statement? And he never got an answer. I'm pretty sure that was a statement though, because like, yeah, it doesn't know. <laughs> Absolutely not. No way, Jose. No, no. Fuck you. No. I believe. I believe that was more of a statement because, yeah, you don't. You don't not wear a turban at your Indian wedding. Oh, do you not? I. I honestly don't know anything about it. Yeah. yeah you. Uh. Statement. Yeah. You are supposed to wear that. Uh, that's definitely a case where I'm not going to project any sort of knowledge on that particular side of the culture because I don't know Jack. So if you could tell me anything about it, I'd probably believe you. You could tell me they all have tigers on leashes there. I'd probably believe you. <laughs> I know. You missed out at your wedding. That was a missed opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I still remember I got a blue mind. It's like, <laughs> I was semi-joking about it. It's like, man. It's like, hey, if I compromise on the elephant, you can too. Or something like that. <laughs> 
Well, I think there's a part there where like the, the rich guy pulls an elephant in the like the thunder ride on in the ceremony, and I was like, oh man, it's like elephants at Indian weddings a thing, and then like as a joke, and then you just pause for a really long time, and I was like, wait, are they? Are they? <laughs> yeah. Oh no, they're 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 freaking real. <laughs> like Grant, I suddenly need to know this information immediately. Tell me, do you? Get... Um, it depends. Like it, if like they can afford it, then yes. But they are expensive as heck, and um, yeah. So the horse is like the easier compromise. Yeah, that makes. I mean, that makes sense. But it's like I I just I was being facetious. I didn't think like they actually had elephants at these ceremonies. I'm like, oh shit, really? <laughs> yes. Fuck. Okay. Well. I In fact, there's a, there's another there's another guy I know who's getting married uh, to another Indian woman, and we were constantly joking on Facebook called "Give this guy his el-, you know just hashtag give him the elephant." <laughs> Dude, if I if I knew that was an option, I would have started a Kickstarter. <laughs> <You know? laughs> give Grant his el- hashtag give Grant his elephant. <laughs> hashtag oh, yeah. jump in the trunk. <laughs> as you can see the actual idea of an indian uh wedding is way more interesting than what was basically portrayed in this movie it was yeah. just kind of i will say it's been the most fascinating wedding i've ever had to commute back and forth from <laughs> <laughs> it was the hour and a half drive yeah i remember i had to make it like four times that weekend oh, oh, oh i am so sorry it's okay i had to work but um yeah it's just like you could tell Chloe Grace Moretz was trying with the little crap that she had. Yeah. Um, Ken Jong, like as short as his stuff was, you know, he did his shtick, but you know what? Once again, at least he's trying something. Or freaking um Michael Pena. Michael Pena. You could tell like he just he had nothing to work with. Like he was like really like a lot of the times he just he felt either flat or he was phoning it in. And I'm not going to blame him on this one. It's just. He looked like he was being in 12 strong. Yeah. Like, man, I prefer collateral beauty over this. Oh, God. God, bring collateral beauty into it. Nobody <laughs> looks good in collateral beauty. I, I don't know. Nope. I'd really but... rather watch Tom and Jerry than collateral beauty again. At least I'm not angry. You know? Yeah. I just remember I was angry every time I looked at the freaking time meter because it's just like <laughs> he just moved so slowly. I thought an hour passed. It was only 45 minutes. Yeah, that's accurate. I thought 20 minutes passed after that. It was only 15. I was like, oh my god, why? Like there's this really weird paint by numbers feel to this movie. Um like this movie feel like it has like a checklist of what they think the modern generation will be interested in in terms of a Tom and Jerry like reboot of sorts to the point where like all the entire soundtrack is like hip hop music. Every animal that's not Tom and Jerry is voiced by a rapper for some reason. Um, even the only time we're like uh, Tom sings a song is auto tuned for no reason whatsoever. Um, the movie opens with rapping pigeons. I can't remember which song it is. I just remember that they had it in one of the Tony Hawk games. What? Moving? No, no, no. I think it might, it might be in the new one. I have no idea. I, Tony um, Hawk, one of mine. But yeah, because it's it's some song where they sampled uh, "Take a Walk on the Wild Side." Mm, okay. That doesn't help me at all. But I believe yeah. I believe you that you know it. <laughs> I just I just know the song that they sample that they, that you hear you know that doom, 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 I just doom. know this movie had a lot of like ideas about what they thought the gen- this current generation is into kind of like yeah. what do the kids like these days let's just put them all in there with Tom and Jerry that that old franchise we haven't done anything with in a long time and then we'll hopefully yeah. get some money out of that that's kind of what this feels like to me yeah like but a very man. cynical cash grab that yeah. just goes like, uh, oh, we'll have all these like millennial talking points in there about like feeling entitled to get up in the world, but you have to work for it like a real capitalist. Uh, and then the whole point is like, you know what? Socialist pukes. <laughs> you motherfucking Russian communist pigs. 
And you SGW oversensitive snowflakes. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. And then the left in the end is basically, you're right. It's like, we shouldn't base things on experience and relevancy. <laughs> we should get some people a shot. But you know what? We're going to lower that five-year minimum to two. Got applications. They didn't, they, so didn't actually say, they didn't actually say that last part, but they might as well have. Yeah, we kind of implied that. But again, again that's that is realistically what would happen. But man, it's just like... Because the, the job market in modern-day America is fucking stupid. But, anyway. but it's like, man, it's just... A lot of the stuff is dated it so quickly in this movie. It's like, man, those original cartoons were timeless. Except for the blatant racism. <laughs> <laughs> that is timeless. Why that? Other than that, it's timeless. I mean, they still hold up pretty well today. They had a good comedic timing. They knew what they were doing in terms of like yeah. pacing and well, pain, for lack of a better term. Yeah. I mean, it also helped that, like, freaking Chuck Jones directed some of those cartoons. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying, you know what's bad? When Looney Tunes back in action has aged better than I know this will in a year. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of which, you looking said, forward to Space Jam 2? I don't know why that's being made. <laughs> like, guys, I don't know when the last time you watched Space Jam is. It's not good. <laughs> I'm still just kind of. I have other thoughts about that movie about basically telling everyone who's like throwing a fit over that thing to just calm down. Oh god, it's I don't. Know. It's one everyone's of like... throwing a fit over something, either over Lola Bone. Bunny. Lola Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is kind of part of the issue, yeah. Uh... <laughs> good job grant you just named like 20 pictures on deviantart <laughs> lola bunny more like lola boning am i right <laughs> oh, i'll hate myself later uh. Uh, right. Space Jam 2 is one of those like dumb modern outrages. I was like, guys, we take five seconds to think about this. You know, none of this fucking matters. Yeah. And, like, grow some fucking perspective in your life for the love of, for all of our sakes. Grow the fuck up. Indeed. Uh, uh, and even although that, I find it, although I find it funny though, over that Pepe Le Pew scene, apparently the actress is really pissed that that who's involved was really pissed that scene got cut. Yeah, I mean, I I can see the perspective. On the other hand, as well as things like I don't really see it adding that much to it. Yeah, that... it's like I totally agree. It's like on the one hand, yeah, he gets his comeuppance. On the other hand, it is pretty ham-fisted and kind of just like not completely necessary. unnecessary. Like whatever, they cut him out. Who gives a shit at the end of the day? Yeah, you know, like. like Here's the thing I noticed about the culture wars and outrage culture is the people, the only people I ever see get really like angry and upset about this isn't the people who call for the censoring. It's people that get mad that it's being censored, quote unquote. Nobody yeah. cares gives more of a shit than they do about these things. And it's only because it's something that attracts something more important going on. Uh, yeah. And besides, we all know that Lola Bunny was done best in the Looney Tunes show for all she, five people that watched that show. She was legit crazy in that. <laughs> She had some great lines. Yeah. <laughs> and they actually gave her a goddamn character. Man, it's funny how we're talking about something just other than Tom and Jerry. <laughs> what is there even a fucking say? It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a cynical cash grab of a movie that is yeah, trying just... to bank on a brand name to hopefully sell a few bucks. It's made the on moment... a cheap budget. <laughs> yeah. The moment I heard someone say, it's like, my daughter was bored. My, it's like, my five-year-old daughter was bored out of mine. I was like, Oh no. Yep, that's about the level of quality we're talking about here. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I I kind of just want to watch a Looney Tunes show now, honestly. Like, I feel like I'd get more out of that. I'm going to rewatch the old I'm gonna rewatch the old classic cartoons on my Blu-rays. <laughs> Go put on Duck and Muck. Huh? Yes. They're all on HBO now too, so that helps too. Yeah. While you're at it, you can also go watch the uh, South Park vaccination special. I don't know. I'm, 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 I feel like I've kind of turned a bit on south park over the years <laughs> no, i'd say the past two, the past two episodes are actually pretty solid 
I don't know. I, I, I feel like uh, Matt and Trey Parker's politics are leaning more into angry man yells at cloud. I mean, that's, uh, you know what? I'm not going to say the joke. <laughs> You're going to get some more people complaining about you. And me. Yeah. It was like, I know even like the, the newest one opens up on like, the, even disclaimer in the first one puts on some bitch fit about the Muppet disclaimer thing, which is another non controversy. Yeah. So it's kind of like, oh, guys, don't give that attention. Come on. Like, that's the kind of shit I'm talking about. I already, for- I already forgot what that controversy was. It was the dumbest thing. It, they, they put a disclaimer in front of a Muppets episode that had the Confederate flag in it. And uh, people said, it's being censored. It's being censored. It's like, they literally put it there so it wouldn't be censored. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't know what the disclaimer is, you goddamn idiots. Uh, but anyway. It's like, damn, censoring? Now get rid of that ad that celebrates gay marriage. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, we're going to burn our Nikes because Colin Kaepernick, you know, kneeled in front of the American flag. But Muppets! Mm! <laughs> Dr. Oh, Seuss! We have to don't take too kindly to Harry Potter, neither. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dr. Seuss! And all that shit. I don't know. I'm just going on a rant. No, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, it's like, tell you what. Let's meet in the middle. Can we at least just cancel Susical? Is Susical controversial? I don't even know. Ah, it's just, it's just not that good. <laughs> wow, you're gonna, now we're going to get all that hate from the Susical fans in the comments. <laughs> Thanks, Grant. Oh, I lost your audio there, buddy. What do you think? Ah, we got two comments. <laughs> hey, that's a lot for us. All right. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Unless, God forbid, I say Superman should fight the Klan, in which case I get hundreds. Uh, that's a whole other thing. Uh, Speaking of which, hopefully uh, you're excited to watch us all watch the Snyder Cut. Uh, why do you got to bring that up? I'm an asshole. Uh, I guess it's going to be a panel because I thought it was going to be Mimu Muha because like, he and I definitely had the most arduous debates about it. But I know that uh, you and Ron want in on that too. So I guess it's going to be a whole panel where hopefully it's not just me being the asshole. Yeah, mostly uh, just because I watched Justice League 1 with you. And even then we did have some slightly... Like we both agreed it wasn't a great movie, but I felt like I was able to tolerate it more than you did. I was ahead of the curve on the Justice League hate when it came out. It took a few months for people, like everyone to kind of catch up to me on that one. I'm gonna be a little smug about that, yeah. Because uh, I was like right off the bat going, "This movie fucking sucks!" Like yeah. fuck Justice League. Errol's trying to give it praise and everything. I'm like, "No, this is dog shit." And they was like, "Oh, yeah. it's not that bad." Like they did this right, they did that right, and then a few months later, everyone's like, "Oh, Justice League sucks." I'm like, "Yeah, I fucking told you." Yeah, it's like, "Oh, Joss Whedon." So this movie is bad now. <laughs> uh-huh. It's like, uh-huh. um. Not not the right pathway to get there, but it's the same destination, I suppose. Yeah, yeah that's the total Josh Whedon thing. We're going to reserve that topic for when we talk about the Snyder Cut, because that's going to be a whole thing. Uh, like, Let me be clear. I have nothing against Snyder, personally. I'm glad he got to make his vision of the movie in the way that he originally intended. That's objectively a good thing. Yeah. Um, I'm still... Like, I don't I'm like how I got you... there. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't like that it's four fucking hours long, but at the same time, he got to make what he wanted. Good for him. I will acknowledge that completely. Yeah, but I'm still legit pretty curious to see how, like, different and to see how much of an improvement it is, because, yeah, it's, it's just, it sounds like a completely different movie. I mean, still has some Snyderisms for better or worse. Usually for me, that's not so good, so much a good thing, but if you enjoy it, you do you, but I'll see... How it ends up when the movie comes out. It's one of those movies, like, if you're a Snyder fanboy, you, you're gonna like it. Like, that's not even up for debate. Like, uh, like our review is not gonna be for those who already made up their mind on whether or not they're gonna like this. Let's be honest. Me? Yeah. <laughs> Me? I have no strong opinion one way or the other. Uh, we all know where I stand. I'm, I'm gonna give it a fair chance. Some of the initial reactions have been positive. Some have not. Yeah. I will go in there as cleanly as I can. It's like and I enjoy surprised. Like I enjoyed his older movies. I enjoyed 300 to a degree. I enjoyed the Dawn of the Dead remake and 
Watchmen director's cut I enjoyed. Watchmen is one of those movies that I look back in hindsight now and go and go. Now I actually I'm old enough to actually understand Watchmen the book to go. Yeah, he did not get that book at all. <laughs> oh, no, I totally agree. The stuff that's supposed to be horrifying, he thought I was like, oh, this is so cool. Yeah, it's pretty like, much. Yep. Uh, man, I wish they really just stuck with the rest of David Hayter's script. Yeah, I, I just oh, know that this new movie like has not one but two scenes of Aquaman slowly tearing off his shirt in slow well, motion. One well, of which going to give this five stars. Yeah, uh, and w- after <laughs> and one of which. He tosses his sweater to like a girl watching by the bay who like proceeds to then sniff the sweater. If this scene is actually in the movie, I'm going to be like, oh, Jesus. And just for the record, that water below, that's not the ocean. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, we're just talking about the Snyder Cut now. So I don't think we have anything else to say about Tom and Jerry. It's really yeah. Sucks. Yeah, just, yeah, it's just basically we had the same effect we did with the little things, except the little things, except thankfully compared to that. This is about twenty minutes shorter. I, I would say little thing. The little things overall was still a miserable experience. If I had yes, because like that was way longer. And it's just like once again, nothing was happening. It was just like just and well, at least people were moving in a faster clip than they were in the little things. Yeah, which uh, that's what I mean is that that was my issue with the little things. Just like it was more of nothing happening. Yeah, whereas sure. this was just. An hour forty of mindless dribble, for sure. Yeah, so I think that's all we really got for this one. I personally don't really have anything else to add to this. Yeah, just just don't watch it. Don't, don't, don't. Um, I'm trying it's to think. Not else. worth your time. Oh, that's right. Also, Peter from Deadpool Two is in this. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and then I think the only ones we got to watch at this point are like we have Finding Ohana and Flora and the Ulysses, but I don't think anyone really cares about those movies at this point. So I'm. Perfectly okay skipping those out. So the next one, the like SpongeBob movie and Moxie, I think, are the other two. Uh, well, I got my 30-day trial for Paramount Plus. Let me know when you want to watch SpongeBob. Excuse me. Oh, that felt uncomfortable. Yeah, so we'll make time for those. It's only back later this week. I think me and Muha are going to check out Cherry because he's got the Apple TV Plus and I don't. So uh, <laughs> we're going to check that out and let's get back to it when we can. In the meantime, uh, we're finally going to put some editorials into production finally. So look forward to that next month. Yeah. Meantime, thank you guys for watching. See y'all later. Later.